Hi there, this is Quantum Phenomena Lesson 5, and this is the fluorescent tube. So let's have a look at this one first, recap question. Let's pause and have a go, then I'll take you through the answer. So energy of a photon, really straightforward. E equals HF, Planck's constant times frequency. So it's 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Multiplied by the frequency, 8 times 10 to the power of 14. So that gives an energy of 5.3 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. Let's move on to the next one. So this one, calculate the energy of a photon of light of wavelength 470 nanometers. We're going to pause and have a go. So energy of a photon of light, we'll simply use E equals HC over lambda. So Planck's constant, which we just used, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, times the speed of light, which we should know, 3 times 10 to the 8. Divided by the wavelength 470 nanometers, so times 10 to the minus 9. And that gives us an energy of 4.2 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Pretty straightforward start questions. Let's move on then. Let's get some new information. So a fluorescent tube is filled with a mercury vapour contained at low pressure. When an electric current is introduced into the tube, the mercury atoms inside the fluorescent tube become excited. Which means, of course, that electrons in the ground state has moved into or have moved into a higher energy level, or you could say shell or orbital. So we're exciting electrons from the ground state into a higher energy level. The free electrons, which is the current, collides with the orbital electrons, the Mercury's electrons, and transfers energy to the Mercury atom's electrons directly. So we've got an energy transfer from the electric current into the electrons of the Mercury atoms. Sorry, remember to pause if you want to take some notes. And then we'll move on. The mercury atoms have discrete or specific energy levels. When the mercury electrons change energy levels, they lose an exact set amount of energy. So that's after they've been excited, they've got to drop back down. And when they drop back down, they lose a definitive or discrete amount of energy as they move between energy levels. The photons that are given off from the de-excitation of the mercury atoms, electrons, is in the UV range, which we obviously can't see. The coating that's on the inside of the fluorescent tube then emits a visible light. So what happens is the coating absorbs the UV light, the photons, and then it re-emits photons of low energy via excitation and de-excitation. So essentially we have a the entire process for the fluorescent tube is a double excitation, double de-excitation. So the first point is the current interacts with the mercury atoms' electrons. The electrons are excited into a higher energy level and then they drop back down energy levels and give off UV light. So a UV, pho uh, a UV photon. That UV light will then interact with the coating that's on the inside of the fluorescent tube. And then we get excitation again for the coating. So we get excitation of the electrons into a higher energy level. And when they drop back down, they give off photons of visible light. That's the trick in the exam question, knowing primarily that there is that this process occurs twice. So the first process to make the UV light, and then the process again with the UV light, to then make photons of visible light. If you want to make some notes, please do. So here's some questions. I like to pause and have a go. 
and then I'll take you through the answers. So first one. The fluorescent tube is filled with mercury vapour at low pressure. The mercury atoms are excited, and when they de-excite, they release a photon. Which part of the EM spectrum is this photon from? That's the first excitation and de-excitation, and it is, of course, ultraviolet light. So the second one. What is meant by an excited mercury atom? So it's an electron in the ground state has simply moved into a higher energy level. Third question. How does a mercury atom in a fluorescent tube become excited? Well, the free electrons of the current collides with the mercury electrons in the ground state and the, the current will transfer energy to the mercury electrons, resulting in them exciting into higher energy levels. Fourth question. Why do the excited mercury atoms emit photons of definitive wavelengths or frequencies? So this is your bog standard Niels Bohr's energy levels. The mercury atoms have discrete energy levels, as do all atoms. Uh, when the electrons drop down energy levels following the excitation, they lose an exact discrete amount of energy. Therefore, photons are emitted with exact discrete amounts of energy. So we get photons of discrete frequencies, or you could say discrete wavelengths, or you could say discrete energies. As they're all related, equals HF and equals HC over lambda. And the last one, explain how the coating on the inside of, of the fluorescent tube leads to the emission of visible light. Well, as we talked about a moment ago, the coating would absorb the photons of UV light and then we re-emit photons of lower energy that are in the visible range. So just to you know, make sure that we know the, the process of excitation and then the de-excitation, dropping back down energy levels, repeats itself in the coating. So that process occurs twice. And if you can get that fundamental idea and remember that, then these questions are pretty straightforward. So you've got the initial excitation due to the current in the mercury atoms themselves, exciting the electrons, and then when they drop back down energy levels, they give off UV light. And then that UV light interacts with the, the coating of the fluorescent tube, causes an excitation again. And then when we come back down the energy levels, we get photons of light instead, visible light. So typical exam question, can be worth a lot of marks this one. Um, I hope that helps and I hope you've got some good notes. So thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one.